30 times. Ten times more. Two times more. Let it go and stop. People are so entitled to thinking that the moment they press on their cell phone, they get answers and information. It's not how it works. This is, this is a practice. Every day, changing your state of being. Doing it for eight weeks without a sugar pill. Just marrying a clear intention and elevated emotion, changing your state of being without any exogenous substance. Sooner or later, you start feeling good. You practice feeling good every day for eight weeks, you're going to start feeling good. It's just going to be the side effect. It just makes sense. Yeah. The, the interesting thing about what's going on, and by the way, let's go. Like really, like let's go. Like that was, that was you know a call to a call to action, and it's exactly you know it really resonates with everything that I feel, and then it contrasts with what appears to be the greatest mass nocebo experiment of all time, mm -hmm. in which everything, everywhere you look, it's a death count. Everywhere you look, it's this is going to kill you. You're not safe. You're never safe. No matter what you do, it's not safe enough. Don't sing Christmas carols. Don't have more than two households over for Thanksgiving. Like that's the whole point of Thanksgiving. All of this messaging that's coming across is a massive nocebo effect, which is triggering the exact opposite mechanism as the placebo effect. And we're in this world and then, but at the same time, it's a beautiful reflection of how much of this will we just gobble up? How much will we take before we reach out and find a community of other brothers and sisters, people willing to stand in their truth and in their sovereignty? And so when you, when you look at this, and I, and I alluded to this, the power of being around a thousand people all going into the quantum together, all going into that meditation together, I felt it in the communities that I've been a part of. When we gather in any ceremony, it's even a biblical passage where two or three are gathered, you know, the divine is sure to be present. Like, there is some amplification effect from community. And is that what you see as, as the way forward? You said it's going to come from all of us. How important is community? in this really revolution of ideas that's going on right now. Well, let's go back to the person who breaks through and stands on the stage that had metastatic carcinoma from uh, breast cancer. This cancer spread throughout her entire body. All she wanted to do was be able to pray again. Her father dragged her to the event. And all she wanted to do was be able to get on her knees and pray. She's a young girl. Couldn't bend over, couldn't walk. She was in so much pain because the cancer was spread through all of her spine. One moment, one moment she was on the stage, couldn't feel any pain in her body, sobbing in tears. I sent her for um, a PET scan. Not an ounce of cancer in her bones. Wh where did it go? I mean, what happened there? You see that person on the stage, and our community gets closer. Thirty times.
Ten times more. Two times more. Letting go and stop. You get people opening their heart. Love bonds. You can't not bond in love. You have to hug. You have to connect. You have to bond. It's, it's whether you're a man hugging a man, a woman hugging a woman, a man hugging a woman. Something happens where we are connecting. And so when you see that person, the first one, Stand on the stage and tell that story, just like an infection can spread amongst the community and create disease. All of a sudden, health and wellness are as infectious as disease. And I just say to my staff, get out of the way. Four people with Raynaud's syndrome in one event, all healed. Two people with Parkinson's, psychiatrist and another lady. Another lady allergic to everything in her life. She, she came with a ventilator and a mask. In the middle of the event, she's in front of the... In the front of the room dancing around, no math, no nothing. When you start seeing people freeing themselves from their own limitations, the energy in the room, it's not just the energy in the room, it's the coherence in the room. Because if your heart is coherent, and I'm sitting right next to you, and my field is coherent, and I'm interfering with your field, and those two fields come together, the union of those two fields, the interference is going to create a higher wave. Higher wave higher energy. <laughs> now there's energy in the room for healing. Now there's an energy in the room for the mystical. And the interference starts creating doors. Interference patterns of fractal geometry that are doors to dimensions. And you tell me then, you get a group of people, a thousand people in a room. You have 50 people in the front of the room wearing a heart rate monitor. By the middle of the event, everybody is locked into their heart. They know how to execute. And I say, get in that heart of yours, and on that energy, lay the thought that the people in the front of the room on that energy, that their lives be enriched, that their bodies be healed, that their dreams come true. And you explain to me then how all those people in the front of the room, the majority of those people go into heart coherence at the exact same time, the exact same day, and the exact same meditation. They're, they're influencing their autonomic nervous system. The collective is in training them into the same frequency. And what is that frequency? Love, gratitude, hopefulness for the greatest good. And so then, the collective then moves as one mind, as one heart. And the collective begins to entrain the weak. The collective begins to care for the other ones that are falling behind, not because they want to run to their dream, but because they want to help people realize their dream because that's important to them. Is you can't not care. You can't not be present. You can't not be kind. And, and Thirty times. Ten times more. <sighs> Two.
two times more. <gasps> Letting go and stop. You see a man show up in a wheelchair from a stroke. Completely disabled. His daughter wheeled him around that whole event. And he had a profound moment the very last day. And he went back. She wheeled him into the house. He could walk. He got up in the morning. He showered for the first time in 10 years. Got dressed. Walked. His wife was having breakfast. He walked down to the, to the store, to the, to the restaurant, and asked if he could, she, he could sit down and have breakfast. She went absolutely crazy. To me, I don't know, there's, that's better than a sports car. That feeling to me is, is worth all the gold in the world. So we have people now that I have witnessed so many profound healings where people are healing other people because they know how to administer coherence and change the field of the person laying before them. They understand the science, the quantum physics. They understand all what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then all of a sudden, they're healing all these people in our events. Tumors disappearing, people stepping out of wheelchairs, crazy blind people seeing, deaf people hearing, crazy stuff. You, 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 this is biblical proportion stuff. And now they're doing it non-locally because they can't be together, but they understand in the quantum there's no separation. They can do it without being there. And they're not doing it. I, I've dropped in on these calls. They're not doing it because they want to hang a shingle on their door saying I'm a healer. In fact, they got to get beyond that in order to heal. They got to get beyond that identity. They're doing it because they're healing themselves every time they connect to love. And so, that person then, whose daughter was riddled with a, a brain injury from a child that never looked at her brothers, never was present, never could talk, was, was still and frozen, who's now looking at her brothers and laughing and hugging them and smiling and trying to talk. We're on the, we're on the call of 50 people and two scientists from a prestigious university, and this woman is telling the story, and everybody is sobbing. Everybody is sobbing. Why? We contribute to the living organism. You made a difference. You changed somebody's life. That's why we do it for that feeling. You keep doing it. That's going to be a common feeling. You're going to get really sensitive to, a, to some energy, to some feeling. That's what it's about. People try to work their whole week in opening their heart at a week-long event. Comes time to heal another person. Now it's no longer about them. And they, they, they get it. They get it, all they had to do was open their heart for somebody else. That's how it opens.